When we laughed as left our heroes, we had done gibberish and gesture. We had done figurative language. We had done punctuation. We talked about Shakespeare power hour. And so now raising the stakes, identifying and performing high stakes tactics within a Shakespeare scene. OK, so let me pull this up. I am really, really about when I'm working with kids, getting them into Shakespeare that they haven't heard of before, but are really, really, really cool scenes in this. So I say you can do this with fourth through 12th graders, but the scenes that we have here are some pretty, pretty high stakes scenes. OK, so um, here's what we do. OK, hide the language. You, owe, you introduce by saying, have you ever really, really wanted something really, really badly? OK. For example, when somebody wants that, we raise the stakes. We say this is completely raised the stakes. For example, when the character, and I'm a big fan of Guardians of the Galaxy, when the character Star-Lord says, you shouldn't have killed my mom and squished my Walkman, we all laugh, but that's really true. That's the only thing he has from his cancer infested, died death, turns out his father killed his mother by cancer. It's a laugh line, but it is reason for him to kill him. He is identifying two very high stakes motivations with this character. So what are tactics? What are this? First game we're gonna play, Hunter Hunted. I have you stand in a circle. I take a set of keys. I get the keys up and I blindfold one person. And the person who's blindfolded has to find the other person in the circle. So they're trying to find the other person and the other person doesn't have a blindfold and they're sneaking and they're around. All of us around the circle are standing there. Our job is to keep them safe. We stand in a circle, keeping them safe, making sure they don't touch anybody. They walk around, they walk around. I say, jiggle the keys. The person who does not have a blindfold jiggles the keys. The person who's blindfolded tries to find them over here. The person who's blindfolded tries to find them over here. Jiggle the keys again, jiggle the keys again. And suddenly, they're gonna have to use different tactics so that they're not caught. The class really loves this. It's like watching a play because you have two conflicting objectives. Catch this guy, don't get caught. Catch this guy, don't get caught. Just like every play has conflicting objectives in it, okay? Eventually, they get caught and the class goes, yay, you know, and they giggle and laugh and all that type of stuff. Now, sometimes I have some jerks because I teach junior high and high school who want to be a part of the play. So they stand in the circle and they go, ah, Huh, off, oh, are they making noise? And they go, whoa, 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 whoa. You're getting in the way of their objectives. We're watching a play. So it also teaches good audience behavior. You know, They can't work for their objectives unless we're around here. I'm just doing that to you because someone's gonna do it. They're gonna try to foul them off. We say, no, 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 this is their play. You're watching it and the intensity exists. Now, what I really love doing is getting a big athletic football-like guy and a little tiny, small, really, you know, mouse-like, ferret like you know girl who can get around who can't get caught and then i reverse it and i have or she get blindfolded and the other and they all have different tactics because in a play there are different objectives and different tactics okay got it cool you can see how you play it going on next game we play a game called i have to go you have to stay so you divide the whole class into pairs. They're standing up in their pairs, 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 pairs around the classroom. After they're all paired around the classroom standing there, you give them their script. Their script is this, I have to go. And the next person says, you have to stay. And Leslie's nodding her head because she knows where we're going with this, right? Kind of, no, I'm thinking of open scenes. Yeah, so they, correct. And so, uh, yes, same. Uh, and open scenes are sometimes eight lines long, you know, et cetera. With the two, they throw these lines back and forth. And so I'm going to play with Megan. I say, you have to stay. She says, I got to go. Say, I got to go. Uh, oh, mic on, mic on. Sorry. There you go. Let's go. You have to stay. Do I say I got to go again? Multiple times until oh, the scene so ends. It's like inflection. and. There you go. There you go. And me. I got to go. Go. No, you have to stay. I gotta go. You have to stay. I gotta go. You have you have to stay. You have to stay. You have to stay. You, I gotta go. You, you have to stay. You have I to stay. Oh. So you can see how these little scenes are gonna emerge. And 
some kids are over on the side of the classroom just yelling at each other. And that's great. And that's where I mean, we go, change your tactics. That's not working. Change the tactics. What are you going to do? Can you say it quieter? Can you say it there? You know, what are the many different ways you can say this? Okay. All right. Next. Students create their own reason for going or staying, but not tell the scene partner of the perform. So I've got to go because my mom is dying in a hospital. That's a pretty high stakes scene. I have to go because I have to go to the bathroom. That's a very humorous thing. Uh, they have to stay because if they go in the hall, there's a guy out there and he's going to kill them. Have to go because, you know, there's multiple things. Following the scene, ask students to guess what the reason was. Well, I could tell it was really intense because she started to cry when I pulled her up. And here's what's cool. You'll have multiple versions of this. There will be three or four people who will take this very seriously as they're doing this scene. And you'll say, great, stop. Would you mind sharing that scene with us? I would like you to share that scene. And then they'll start to share that scene. Um, and, uh, and I'll go, wow, did, did you notice how they were working on that? Okay. Following each session of performances, ask the students about motivation or tactics. Now, again, I have not even talked about Shakespeare yet, right? I've talked about Marvel's Guardians of the Ga Galaxy. I've talked about Wants and Needs. They've been acting with all that type of stuff. I hand them the high stakes handout scene. Okay. So uh, can you see this still? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So here are a number of scenes that they probably haven't heard of. Uh, and you, uh, because you're Shakespeareans, uh, you, you kind of know this. I'm going to talk you through these. I got more where these came from, but th that's the choice. I say, figure out which one you want to do. Eager to meet her husband, Imogen discovers that her husband, Posthumus, wants her dead because he thinks her unfaithful. Pisanio is sent to kill her. Imogen says, false to his bed. What is it to be false? To lie and watch there and to think on him? To weep twixt clock and clock, if sleep charge nature? To break it with a fearful dream of him and cry myself awake? That's false to his bed? Alas, good lady, I false? Oh, men's vows are women's traitors. Hence, vile instrument, thou wilt not down my hand. He's throwing the blade down. I must die, and if not by my hand, thou art not a servant of thy masters. The lamb entreats the butcher. Where is thy knife? Thou art so slow to do thy master's bidding when I desire it to. Gracious lady, since I received command to do this business, I have not slept one week. Well, do it and to bed then. I'll wake mine eyeballs first. It's a great scene. It's a great, great scene. Kids may not know it. As you go around in the class, you can get them there. Midsummer Night's Dream, you can tell I love this. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. You know, yes, high stakes. Isbel. I've talked a little about this. She fears that her brother doomed to die might not want to die, okay? Other scene, I love this scene. This is what most people choose, by the way. I don't know why. I tell them to read through them, they choose this. Hubert reads a paper. Must you with hot irons burn out both mine eyes? Young boy, I must. And will you? I will. Will you put out mine eyes? These eyes that never did nor never shall so much as frown as you? I have sworn to do it, and with hot irons must I burn them out. And if an angel should come and tell me that Hubert should put out mine eyes, I would not have believed him. Come, boy, prepare yourself. Is there no remedy? None but to lose my eyes. Oh, spare mine eyes. I can heat it, boy. Okay. So it's interesting. It says the instrument is cold. So apparently, apparently he wasn't too serious about doing it. He doesn't want to do this either. It's a brilliant scene. Nobody knows about it because it's from King John. It's a beautiful scene. Uh is it want to go want to stay absolutely and that's where we're going here every single one of these scenes are high intensity i want to go i have to stay okay here is the a fellow scene give me your hand this hand is moist my lady but it had no edge this argues fruitfulness where is the handkerchief i need the handkerchief give me the handkerchief give me the handkerchief i have to go i have to go you have to stay you have to stay okay got it everyone see what's happening with that you give it to them. Divide the class into multiple pairs of students so each has a scene partner. Or you may choose the scene partners, okay? Select the scene. Read through or translate and identify the objectives and raise stakes language. Explore tactics through physical, vocal, emotional, cerebral gesture. Perform the scene with the language. Make sure that all the students are exploring the text on feet, text and mouth, fully exposed to them. And connect it to the want to stay, want to go exercise that we just did before that. Okay. Now, assessment. Have students identify two or four lines in the text that specifically illustrate the high stakes objective. Once they've identified the lines, the students will perform just those lines, reducing the whole text just to those elements. 
right? So you're basically going want to stay, want to go with, I will out your eyes. Please do not put out my eyes. No, I will do it. And then have them try different tactics on, I'm going to burn out your eyes. No, don't burn out my eyes. I'm burning out your eyes. No, please don't burn out my eyes. Have them explore different ways that they can increase the intensity of the language through different tactics, okay? Now, I've got four different versions of what you can do here. Number one, have students select two or four. These are lines that can be repeated. I want to go, I have to stay. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Uh, will you put on my lines? I've sworn to do it. Students will divide into groups and share performances with the others. After each scene, the students will identify the high stakes lines. Key questions asked the students, what is the most effective line within your scene? And I'm going to say something really profound here, so you might want to circle this one. Frequently, they will pick the quote best lines or the lines that they understand and they will pick those. And then I will ask them, what's the most ineffective line in your scene? And they will find the one that's ineffective. I said, OK, now do the scene with the most ineffective line and make it effective, right? Because every line is in there for a reason. You have to find the reason for it. OK, so uh, what lines would you have chosen from there to emphasize your amplified there before that? OK, uh, uh, find two or four lines that do not encompass the objectives. Use the two or four lines that that you feel do not meet the objectives and use them amplifying the objectives. Uh, and then five, have students stand individually scattered around the class. Have students select their favorite two lines from science. Have the students individually, but simultaneously as a group, orally perform the lines, amplifying their stakes across the room. So we do scene work, and then we go out and do this way, and we do the other. So basically, it's Michael Barr's way of taking a whole bunch of different acting components and using them and mining it here. Now, I have no description of this, so I'm sorry to give this to you, too. There's another really cool exercise. You go to Home Depot. You go into their landscape department. You go and you get those really, really thin bamboo, like the, uh, as thin as a um, as thin as a uh, pen. They're hard and stiff. They use them to stand up plants and stuff like that. They are about yay long. OK, uh, you hand one to each person. The people hold them up and when they hold them up, one person puts them here. And the other person puts them there. And they hold them tension wise. So I'm holding one with this hand and I'm holding one with this hand. Does that make sense? OK, so they're separated by distance from their scene partner. And then I have them go. I have to go. You have to stay. I have to go. But they can't let go of the stick. Does that make sense? So I have to I have to go. And then they start to move. If they start to move, where's their scene partner going to go? Scene partner's going to follow them. You're going to follow them. You're going to go here and you've got these amazing dances happening as they're putting there. Uh, they cost about three, four bucks for a packet of six to eight of those. OK, moving around the class. Want to stay, want to go. You then give them their Shakespeare lines and they do the Shakespeare line, too. What it automatically does, I think it was Megan. Somebody, who was it? Somebody said that, you know, they're just acting all alone. They're just standing there all alone. They're just doing their lines alone instead of engaging with their scene partner. This forces them to connect with their scene partner. And if they leave, the stick drops. You can't just leave. So it's amazing watching how you keep your scene partner to stay in the classroom by not moving and by keeping them keeping them there. It's really, really cool. I haven't written up in a lesson plan yet, um, but I call, I call it text tango or bamboo with the bard uh, because you got the Shakespeare and you're working that too. It's a really, really nice kind of physicalization exercise holding those two. But I don't have a description of that, but I got the sticks. Sticks are in the corner of my room uh, that we just play with. OK, cool. Any questions on this lesson before I plow into the next one? No. Um, I love that it uses scenes that they haven't heard before. I love that it takes it to the essence of all acting objectives. Uh, students really, really love the scenes and it forces them to start to unpack um, those those scenes as they do them. OK, cool.